Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and in this video I present the Perseverance Rover. Now this model is not mine. The model of the body and all the instruments itself is from NASA and specifically by Brandon Summers from NASA. I got it from the standard NASA 3D model website and it's mostly meant for 3D printing I think, not for this purpose. As such it had a lot of polygons I'm sorry, it actually had the NASA logo etched here, plus Brandon Summers written on the bottom, but I removed that because, well, if I had imported it like that, it, uh, it wouldn't have shown up because there's a polygon limit in Kerbal Space Program. So instead, I put the credit in the description of the part. Uh, I keep misspelling that. Okay, so here it says, model by Brandon Summers of NASA, so... That's how we're going to go about it. Uh, the wheels are not included in this model because they have to be separate parts anyway. And I just decided to use Kerbal Foundry wheels. They're good enough. They are a fair match. They're these KF small rover wheels, uh, currently scaled to 0.82. Uh, but that does lead the mass to be a little bit over. It's supposed to be 1.05 tons. So if uh, you want, uh, maybe 0.8 is a better fit. Uh, you can just scale them to make sure that the right mass is there. Okay, uh, 1.064 is close enough. Uh, so the body's only 0.45. In real life, of course, the wheels would be much lighter and the body would be heavier, but as long as it all ends up about right, I think that's good. And the wheels being heavier makes it more solid to the ground anyway. Uh, one thing I did do, of course, is the deploy instruments um, animation so that it goes into packed and unpacked mode but they don't animate like the stock you know arm does or anything like that so it's just like this it'll rove around like this you can't move them I haven't implemented uh, any sort of robotic parts before so otherwise uh, we could have uh, sort of had hinges here but I don't even think you can have more than one hinge on a part so it'd be all complicated to be a, a lots of parts here. Another thing that we don't have is the wheels going into the folded position so that's got caused problems for the cruise stage uh, because I had to make the cruise shell larger in order to accommodate the fact that the wheels don't tuck in so that's just uh, one of those little things that is going to be a little bit different, but having the wheels stuck in would be a whole mess, and I don't even know how to do that in this case. But anyway, let's just verify that this can drive around. Let me start it packed so that you can see the animation in its proper speed. So let me save that, since we resize the wheels and everything. The textures are not finalized. I might uh, add spiffier textures to it, but uh, it's okay for now as far as I'm concerned. I haven't put science in it yet. I'll do that later after I test. I haven't tested whether it can launch properly or get to Mars or anything. We're at a launch window for Mars, but not the 2020 one. We're at like 1960 something. So anyway, uh, let us deploy the instruments. So that's the actual speed. And moving forward. So the front wheels have regular steering, the back wheels have inverted steering, the middle wheels do not have steering, they have steering locked. Um, the RTG provides 110 watts, so 0.11, and the probe core in the body consumes 0.04, so 40 watts. And so that'll give you some margin to recharge and drive around, but not infinite. Eventually it'll run out. You can see uh, it won't take that long for it to run out if you keep roving about at really high speeds. Still, of course, the real rover would not go anywhere near this fast or this far at one time. But yeah, uh, watch out for antenna stuff because right now I've got comms off, but but the antennas could consume more power than I'm expecting. Well, than they should because uh, obviously we're going with the real consumption and I, I think the real consumption and the real pr power production of the RTG so the remaining charge should be enough for the for the comms and whatever science it does 
little bit of a skid there. Uh, though these wheels have a lot of skiddy sound to them. So okay, I think we can be satisfied that it rolls around properly. Let's see it packed in and uh, take a look at what I actually had to do, which is create the Sky Crane Cruise Stage heat shield and all that business. Okay, so I'm gonna just directly import it from the SPH here. I have tried to reduce the poly count on this model a bit, uh, not just the bottom part, but in other places. But it's still probably gonna be the largest single model that you have in your KSP folder. It's like 35 megabytes and all together this has like half a million vertices. Perseverance. I should have made Percy a tag for it <laughs> so I didn't have to type that out every time. All right, so so the sky crane now the sky crane can be put on directly but you need a decoupler. I, uh, somebody mentioned that there's a module a decoupler module that allows you to have thrust on the part as well but I haven't played around with that so uh, and having the decoupler helps in other ways. So we've got the shell, we've got the cruise stage, we just got to put them all here, and the heat shield, okay? So those are the parts, and we're gonna have a decoupler here. For some reason I have the old procedural parts in here without the shiny decouplers, but reverse it, otherwise it's gonna hang around with the rover, and then put the sky crane. And size-wise, we want the sky crane edge to basically be right on that. So, like that, probably. You could tuck it in even further. There's no... The collider for the sky crane ends about here-ish. So it won't cause any problems if you actually clip it in a little bit. If it turns out that uh, the wheels you prefer don't get enough clearance or something. So the sky crane will separate off like that, and it has its own controller. Um, yeah, it's got KOS, Mac Jab, and whole business. Uh, it and the rover combined uh, have uh, 669 meters per second. Keep in mind some of that's RCS and thrust weight ratio of 1.29 right now. I based the amount of fuel in here just based on the volume of the tanks, and it's sized about right. Uh, if the wheels tucked in, the thrusters would be more obviously in the correct position. But right now they seem a little bit high and torching the wheels. Obviously the wheels actually bend in to like here, up here, and back here. They, it sort of wraps around. So they get out of the way, way of the thrusters. Um, these are the RCS thrusters. And they're, they are the way they are. I, I couldn't figure out exactly the angle that they ought to be, and I don't know if they work right now. That's one thing we're going to test. But uh, they are the way they are because they have to fit onto the gaps in the shell. So we put the shell on. The shell has its own decoupler, and it has a couple of nodes. It's got a top node. It's got a node for the sky crane and a node for the heat shield. So we're going to put it on the sky crane node. The sky crane node is the one that has its decoupler on. You see it's got a decoupler. So when it separates off, you might want to put separatrons. Um, just in case the force isn't right. I will have to see. That's one thing we can test. So we've got that. The heat shield goes on the heat shield node at the bottom. And the heat shield, of course, you'll want to have uh, heat shield jettison staged. So you'll have that. The parachutes go on to the cruise stage, so let's just put those on right, not the cruise stage, the, the shell. So let's have two, like so, and let us configure those, so I'm just using real chutes. Triple shoot uh, Kevlar, learned the hard way that it needs to be Kevlar, drogue shoot. It's 80 meters per second, and I've looked at their EDL diagram, the entry, descent, and landing diagram. And so it is 80 meters per second. Uh, we'll just use this uh, dry, the dry mass for this bit. I don't know if I've got the mass of the, the dry mass of the sky crane, the dry mass of the shell, or the dry mass of the heat shield right. Those, if you guys have other information, and this looks like the wrong number for that combination right now, uh, please tell me, or if when we test it and try to go to Mars, it doesn't look right, I'll fix it. So, target altitude, 
Um, 11 kilometers. And we'll just use two parachutes, I guess, because we'll have two. And so, pre um, actually, target altitude will say 7 kilometers. And pre deployment is 11 kilometers. And deployment, uh, let's say, 8 kilometers. Okay. And we'll see if that works out for us. Fly. Okay. So that doesn't add too much extra to the mass. Okay, and then the cruise stage. All I've got on here is a little bit of extra fuel. Uh, we should be able to cross feed through. So, let's see. Enable cross feed. I don't know. Maybe you have to run a pipe or something. Uh, well, we'll see that properly if we get these thrusters down. Or. Well, no, it is cross-feeding, because otherwise the burn time would be less. So, okay. So that cross-feed is fine. The cross-feed is just to use the RCS thrusters. I think the cruise stage might have RCS thrusters on its own. And so, if you need them, uh, I've configured it for MMH and NTO. It's probably just hydrazine, but I didn't see that in the press kit. So, if they're not going to tell me, I'll go with whatever the heck I want and, you know, wait until they tell me. So you could easily put extra thrusters on here if you feel like. And these can be configured to MMH and uh, NTO. So like that. That might be recommended even. And I think they have the solar panels on top. I didn't integrate the solar panels because I couldn't see exactly how they were. I don't know exactly how they are, but This will do the trick. Um, it mounts onto the Centaur here. Okay, it mounts upside down. So keep that in mind. So we've got extra RCS thrusters. Um, the cruise stage goes off first. Uh, the parachutes happen. Yeah. The shell goes off. Uh, and those activate. The heat, well, the, the heat shield goes off after the parachutes then the shell goes off, then the thrusters go, and then it decouples off the rover. Okay, so that's our setup there. Now we have to put it onto the launch vehicle. So this all gets upside down. <laughs> and then you could use my atlas or you can use somebody else's atlas. Uh, as long as they've sized it right, it should be fine. And for my atlas, uh, we need a decoupler. And then we need the Centaur, single engine. And I'm just going to make this decoupler full sized. Okay, and then this was my RL10. Okay. A little bit of frosty texture and it should have the RCS built in right now and then after that we have the 500 series interstage adapter the boat tail this only needs the short fairing I, I swear I've got the fairing sizes wrong though I went with the numbers they had but I think the numbers were like counting the boat tail or something um, I've sort of put a textures unlimited shininess on these parts. That's why they're sort of shaded differently. Uh, I might reconsider that. Okay, so we've got all that, and then we've got the first stage tank, and then the R RD one hundred and eighty. Okay. Ah uh, no. Okay, I'm just gonna use regular decouplers for the boosters because I find them safer. And we gotta place them one at a time in line with these brackets here. I don't know if they got decoupled cleanly with just a decoupler and not some other separator. We're not using the custom AJ60A decouplers because I don't know which one will be good. This one has the ejection force of 1,500. This one has the ejection force of 10 but a little bit of thrust. <laughs> so. 
Uh, one of them probably works pretty well. Okay, so we've got a huge staging mess. What we want is the RD-180 first. Up, up, up. First. This is mostly right except for that decoupler, so let's just get that out and bring all these down. And then we'll have two separate SRB separations. That one and the opposing one first. And then the other two. We'll need the fairings off, yeah. And then separation of the stage. And we'll have the RCS for the stage go first, and then the RL10. And then that's the decoupler at the top of the Centaur. So we'll have that go at the same time as we activate the RCS on the cruise stage. And then the rest should be as it was with our payload. So this is Perseverance Atlas. So this is my first time trying to launch my Perseverance rover assembly. And I don't know whether it's going to be okay or not. We'll find out. Uh-oh. The wheel broke from overstressing. Well, first of all, we should probably um, control from the centaur. I should have made the centaur the root part. Okay. Control from here. Okay. Um, so I don't know about the wheel overstressing. I don't have part pressure limits or anything. So, or g-force limits. Well, that's worrisome. I thought we had very nice wheels like that. Oh, is it gonna be a nighttime launch? It's gonna be a nighttime launch, isn't it? Well, shucks. Okay, so throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Huh. Okay. Well, it's go. It doesn't have a very good indication of thrust. If the this the, it seemed like it was tailing off based on the fuel consumption, but it didn't say the thrust was going down. That's weird. Okay, well, they decoupled. Okay, fairing set. Okay, stage set. And... Ignition. Bit dark around here. But we are moving. Depends on the launch, uh, on the Mars window and how much Delta V it costs, but we might be a little bit too heavy. One option would just be to underfuel the cruise stage. If you find that to be the case for the 2020 window. It's tight, uh, it's like, it depends on the window itself, whether the Centaur is going to have enough in order to get the payload on its trans Mars injection. We'll see in this case. Most windows it would work for, given the Delta V we seem to have right now. But some windows it wouldn't. Now we aren't exactly at the window, unfortunately. I just eyeballed it as far as the, the gap between Earth and Mars. So we'll see how well that works. That'll do. 211 by 187. We've got 3,827 meters per second left in the Centaur, so maybe we're a little bit heavy. But I wish they had numbers of, I mean, on how heavy the full assembly was. They had the rover's mass, of course, but I looked through the press kit and they didn't have the components of the EDL stuff, the mass of those. Hmm, okay, ASAP, oh god. Lois says in two years. Well, I sure haven't got that. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm too late. Alright, whatever, two years. Um, as long as we're not paying attention to it, we're not gonna have boil off. 
So I'm gonna go to the tracking station and wait the two years. And then do the maneuver. Cheats, I know, but... I don't want to relaunch it right now. I'll save the official 2020 reenactment for later, after I'm sure that all the parts work. And uh, we'll get a nice little cinematic of the rover being deployed to Mars closer to the actual event, I think. I'll let you guys try it yourself first, perhaps. Okay, it doesn't look like we've had... Well, we've had some loss of Delta V, somehow. Um, maybe that's just the engine gimbling. Yeah, no, we've uh, had some loss. Okay, uh, let me double check that that's really... Let's see, maneuver planner reset. ASAP, please. Create node. Okay, so one hour we can do that. There's a whole lot of decouplers that need to work properly. There we go, we finally get to see it in light, jeez. Well, looks like our burn happens at sunset, basically. Okay, note please. It's pretty close. This may be a little bit too heavy. I don't know what component is heavy. Maybe I put too much fuel in the cruise stage. Okay, so we're a little bit late, selling the fuel down, ignition. The glow of the setting sun on our Centaur and Perseverance rover assembly. Well, we've got a bunch of extra hydrazine, so I'm just going to start firing those thrusters right now. Use the RCS to help out with the burn. We could finish it off with the RCS here or maybe with the cruise stage RCS. One other thing we could do is just reduce the amount of blader on the Perseverance heat shield. That's like earth amounts of a blader. Okay, we're just about running out of the hydrazine. We still got some to do, but we should just do the rest at a mid-course adjustment, I think. The sky crane might be a little bit lighter, I don't know. It's a lot of structure. The cruise, the cruise stage dry mass is now uh, currently 400 kilograms. The sky crane 700 this dry. Um, the shell 400 and the heat shield 500. So that's probably all too much. Okay, that's probably too much, so... That would be best done here if we can. So I'll lighten it up in the package that I link in the video description. I'll just make them lighter for now until I get more information. So for reference we're now at 4.8 tons so I don't know what it's supposed to be at this point. Okay, that looks like inclination to me. Trying to get it to land in the right place is a whole other business, by the way. We'll set it there for now and then handle the rest when we get there. So, uh, orientation, sun, down. Seems like the cruise stage has enough for all of this correction business. And we are recharging and on our way. Okay, time for the mid-course adjustment, 4.7 meters per second. Going for the north pole, probably not where we're supposed to go, but... Okay, let's just uh, go ahead and get into Mars SOI and figure it out from there. So reorient to the sun. This will throw us off by quite a lot as it is. All over the place. Okay, all good. Okay, we've entered Mars SOI, but we're too far away from Mars. So, orbit real negative, is it? Still working off of this fuel, so that's pretty good. Thinking about it, uh, having a 4.8 ton package to deliver just one ton to the surface is a little bit overdoing it. 
Oh, well, that should probably definitely bring us down. Okay. Continuing to Mars. Um, we should probably still reorient to the sun though. So I'm going to right click on the Perseverance Sky Crane, activate its RCS, and let's see if that works as we turn to retrograde. Yeah, there are C that RCS is working. Okay, so that's one thing down. Um, I'm going to point normal. And we're going to try and eject off the Sky Crane. We have been controlling from it, so that's why I focused on it. The Sky Crane has been released. Okay. We still have control over this. I want to go retrograde. Actually, surface negative. Hopefully it can do that for us. Um, oh, it occurs to me that the only controller... Uh, we need to control from the Sky Crane in particular. That's what it is. Otherwise, we're controlling from the rover, which is the root part right now. The rover is oriented differently. Everything's oriented differently. Um, what's the attitude adjustment? Oh, okay. Well, it's amazing we have done so well as it is. If it turns out that all this runs on hydrazine, it's probably not too bad as far as the delta V is concerned. We had plenty in the cruise stage for corrections, it seems. So if we lose about a third of that, which the change to hydrazine would do, it'd still be all right. Okay, we have entry interface. In the pictures, the heat shield looked brown, so that's why I went with. Hmm, it's a little bit wiggly. Uh-oh. The sky crane is exposed. Well, I guess it's RC. Well, I don't know about that. Oh. Okay. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> hmm, sky crane. Okay, I'll add more heat tolerance to sky crane. And I will reduce the amount of mass on certain parts and we'll see. Well that's the first attempt <laughs> and we will have further attempts but I'll link uh, with, with some changes at least the RCS seems to work and we'll see what else goes wrong but I'll give you the parts and you can tell me what else is wrong. And perhaps you have some feedback, because I'm sure a lot needs to be changed. And if you've got some documentation... I know that Curiosity used hydrazine. I don't know if this mission uses hydrazine, because in the pictures it had two different kinds of tanks on the sky crane, so that's why. Anyway, this will be a process, but that's why I'm showing it to you now, so that uh, you can give your input. So, there we go. Perseverance Rover Part 1. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.